What's up guys, Dr. D here from One Hive Invicta, bringing you a war recap from the first week of the CWLL in One Hive Invicta. Uh, we matched up with um, OSF. Uh, this is a fun war because uh, the OSF is actually comprised um, mostly, but not completely, of former uh, One Hive family or uh, 2.0 family members. Um, so uh, Mikey is over there, and Mikey kind of runs this clan. And uh, Mikey was my first leader when I came in uh, to Venom, uh, along with uh, DWS. So it was um, it was it was fun to watch. This is a really cool war. Uh, just as a, as a quick disclaimer, this was actually a twenty four v twenty four war instead of a twenty five twenty five. There was some uh, mistakes with. Uh, subbing in somebody kind of last minute and that person's weight was a bit too high and so we wound up dropping that person out they did not attack and uh, the OSF also dropped someone out um, a bit lower weight in order to balance things out uh, we um, had a heavier guy in there uh, so those were uh, removed and we did not hit those bases nor were those attacks used so you'll see that they were both uh, 48 uh, attacks on both sides. Uh, okay, without any further ado, let's get in and look at the war statistics. Okay, so here are the basic war statistics. Uh, you can see that we had 21 triples, they had 15 triples. Uh, note, as I mentioned earlier, uh, 48 attacks on both sides, two were held back, and we'll look at those two here in just a second. Um, Total destruction, 91.36 on our side, 87.56 on their side. Uh, props to our uh, three guys who had six packs. Armor Queen, two 10v10 triples. Pretty, pretty impressive. Um, as we scroll down, Clutch uh, also had a six pack. Clutch is moving on to 2.0 now. Um, here is uh, PAB Scott, who unfortunately was not allowed to attack. Um, and his base was left open, so it wound up being a 24-24 rather than a 25-25. And our last six-pack was Ruda. Okay, um, if we look uh, on this side, um, basically they, they left a 10 wide open. Um, only we're able to get one on either, uh, both of our 11s, um, and then uh, a couple of uh, open 10s down here and a few open Town Hall 9s. Um, so that was the difference. That was where these uh, 10 stars came from. Uh, if we look on, on our side, we left open two 11s. I mean, <laughs> seeing 11 of the 11 triples are, are, are pretty rare these days. Um, one Town Hall 10 did not get tripled. Yo-Yo got a 66%. We cleared um, all of their Town Hall 10s, all of their Town Hall 9s, with the exception of Dutch. Uh, because of that agreement that we had. Um, so Invicta had a very nice showing here. Um, all right, let's go ahead and hop in and look at some of these war attacks. We'll start from the bottom, like I like to do. Uh, we're going to look at number 23, and this is Lee hitting Dion, who is a former uh, uh, Invicta member. A lot of these guys, um, if we scroll through here, Dion is a 2.0 member. Um, Mach was a 2.0 member that I remember. Um... For some reason, Snap, Crackle, Pop looks familiar, but I couldn't tell you whether or not that was a 2.0 member or not. Uh, Jaguar was. Shed definitely was. In fact, Shed was uh, in Venom with me when I was in Venom and then in Swarm with me when I was in Swarm. Um, Mikey uh, is the former leader of Venom, and, and this is, uh, I'm pretty sure he's the leader of this clan now. Um, and then uh, Akraterian, who is, uh, actually that's Shed's Town Hall 11. Um, so yeah, we know a lot of these guys uh, pretty well. Okay, let's have a look here. Uh, Dion um, getting tripled by Lee. And so if you look at Lee's army comp here, uh, 26 hogs and king and a queen and uh, a few baby dragons and some loons. And he's doing something a little bit interesting here, right? He's pulled this CC out. And he's just kind of sitting there with it. Finally drops a poison, then pulls them back into that poison. Uh, throws down one baby dragon and a queen. Now his goal is actually going to be to clear out all of this junk around here. And all of this junk over here with these baby dragons. So that the entire top portion of this base 
from this army camp all the way over to what was an army camp here is gone before he starts bringing in his king. So uh, now he's got a straight shot with his king straight down to the queen, and that's what he's banking on. And if you look at the defenses now, um, the defenses are going to path straight across this way, which means you can just bring mass hogs from this side of the base, and they'll walk right across there, just like he's going to do here. Uh, king is in. King gets that queen. Um, half of his hogs on that cannon, the other half of his hogs on this other cannon. Um, could have could have used one giant maybe, uh, but uh, no need. Um, those max hogs are are really just beasts. Uh, one heel goes down, um, and he's got a huge pile of hogs there. Second heel goes down. Uh, you're going to see he doesn't even need this third heel. Um, this base is basically done at this point. He comes in with the backside with some backside loons, and that is it. Defenses are gone, and it is cleanup. He's got one baby dragon and, and a heal spell left. Just wrecked this base. Uh, these really, really compact bases, you've got to be careful with those because if you can get hog pathing correctly, you can just run straight through them, just like he did there. Nice job, Lee. Tree stars in the bag. All right, let's move up to Lazarus. So um, Lazarus is coming with a Volalo. Uh, you can see this is a bit uh, more spread out base. It's kind of interesting. Um, easy to get uh, two air defenses on the entry, and that's what he's going for here. Um, with, with a solid jump, you can almost get to all four air defenses, though this big open space makes it a bit more difficult. Uh, <laughs> some issues with wall breakers there. And so, uh, brings in the king to beat through that last bit of wall there. We'll speed it up here just for a second. King gets through. Um, here comes one golem. Here comes the bowlers. Uh, king jumps in. Finally, CC is out. A couple of poisons go down. Oh, there they go, as, long, as well as the Rage and the Heal. Um, and this is one of those occasions where you use both Rages on your Kill Squad. Um, personally, I like using both Rages on the Kill Squad. Uh, other people will actually will watch an attack here in a little bit, uh, where we only get one Rage on the Kill Squad, and the other Rage uh, is broken up into um, Hastes, just to speed up these Loons. Um, the loons now attack so much faster that um, just getting them to the target is more important than, than anything else. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, we've got uh, a mass of loons here. Still has a hound up. That hound, I don't believe, ever does pop. Oh, maybe it does. Nope. Yep, there it goes. Um, and that is it. It is tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Lazarus. All right, let's check out another Bolalo. Let's have a look at not Seb uh, seventeen. Here we go. Big D McSmash. Now he's also coming with a Bolalo, and as you can see there, he's got three hastes instead of just the uh, one haste that we often see. Now he knocks out a, a mortar down here. I'm sorry, uh, one rage that we often see. Knocks out a mortar, and with these bases that have this um, jutted in design, you can walk your kill squad straight into that area, drop your bowlers, and a single jump, and you are right in the center of the base. Um, he's got access to, well, at least two, if not three air defenses from this angle. Uh, I believe he only does wind up getting two. Um, throws that rage down. Um, Bowlers finally decide to move into the rage. Uh, King is in. Bowlers are in. Queen is in. It is just smash time at this point. So uh, there goes two air defenses. Third air defense is not, or I mean, yeah, the third air defense is not going to wind up going down here. Um, but uh, he comes in with uh, a hound up top, followed by some loons and a haste. And another hound, and a haste with some more loons. Finally, that queen gets in there and gets that other uh, air defense down. And this one, I believe, is where the second hound never does pop. So right, though, um, it is going to be 
Tree stars in the bag. It's just clean up at this point. Nice job. Big D McSmash. All right. So um, we had Mr. BDE in uh, the lineup here. Um, and so he gets to be part of the CWLL here with us. Uh, let's have a look at um, Big Dog Eats Attack on 15. And if you look down here, you can see he's already dropped one golem. It is uh, one of my favorite named attacks, at least, and that is the Stoned Hobo. Um, coming in a uh, couple of golems initially. Once he breaks in, he's going to drop that third golem. And there we go. Uh, third golem is down. Bowlers are down. Very nice funnel straight into that corner. A perfect jump, and that jump gives him access to, you know, over half of the base. Uh, goes ahead and drops a heel. Probably could have used that heel in a different spot, but it works out. Um, his bowlers, uh, although they take that giant bomb there, most of them step up out of that area and are right back into that heel. Uh, Finally gets the CC down with a double poison, um, and in come the hogs. Now notice he's only got one heal for the hogs, and he's got a lot of point defenses left. But fortunately, um, all of those point defenses, in the middle at least, are focused on the golems. And he's going to have one golem survive here. Hogs come out of the heal that they were just in, um, take out one uh, expo, and now they're on to the next expo. And when those hogs are in clumps like that, it's... It's dangerous for spring traps like that, but um, and it's dangerous for, for big splash types of bombs, but also they wipe out defenses so quick. So he's got a lot of hogs left. Granted, none of his hogs have very much health at all, but it doesn't matter because there's only one defense left, or there was, and they took care of it quickly. And that is it. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, BDE. All right. Um, we're going to move up uh, to number 10, um, Pelano. And Pelano is coming in with a Queen Walk Lalo. This is a really cool attack. First, look at the, num <laughs> look at the number of, of uh, wall breakers this guy brings. So he's got seven wall breakers, and he's really going for broke here. Um, a little bit of a miss on that rage, but it works out because she steps up. Um, starts clearing the sides. Gets that queen taken care of. Unfortunately, those wall breakers go straight to the worst spot on the wall. Uh, next wall breakers come in, and they do wind up getting it. He's got three wall breakers yet, and he's got a plan for those three wall breakers. Now, it doesn't quite work out the way that he had hoped, but uh, you'll see this queen just does some, some massive, massive work. Here comes those last three wall breakers with the intention of busting through that wall right there. Would have been nice. Didn't quite work out for him. Uh, still, but... Uh, one expo right there. Um, she's going to step up and she's going to get that uh, air defense, pull out the CC. She's going to get the CC. Now eventually she's going to wind up beating through walls. You can see uh, there's only a few things on the outside of the walls up here. And she'll, she'll take those out and then she'll beat through walls. And in comes two of the hounds. Now he's going to lose a hound here fairly quickly. And so he drops the third hound as well, which is scary because right now he's got two hounds left three air defenses left and you'll see that actually they don't even make it to this air defense over here fortunately though the queen loves to punch through walls or at least his does and uh winds up taking it out but um this blower's giving him a little bit of problems he's out of spells uh he's out of uh any troops that can make any difference at that point right there he drops a couple of of loons, but it's scary right here, right? These these loons are moving up onto a um, air defense, but the mass of loons winds up getting there just in time to knock out that final air defense. Queen steps up, takes out the wizard tower. Only two loons left at this point, um, but lots and lots of pups out there. Uh, this loon winds up just barely getting it, and it is sag cleanup. Nice job, Pelano. All right. Um, moving on, we have Iggy on number eight. 
a lot of stuff to really like about this attack. I'll tell you, um, right now, if you're not practicing Pentalaloon, you should be because it is such a monster attack. Iggy comes in, he brings a single hound to pull the CC. He needed two hounds, or I mean uh, hogs. Uh, he needed two hogs. He brought a single hog to pull the CC, and it did not get it all. So we've still got a baby dragon in there. Now the idea was to use the um, king and queen to step up here, uh, pull the CC with that hog, and then get this air defense. It doesn't happen. Um, actually, I think the queen might get the air defense, but does not get the enemy queen, that's for sure. See what happens. Oh, no, she doesn't even get the air defense. So, here we go. Queen is focused on that hound, and that hound is going to pop right here. He's really in here. He waits until the queen and both of those expos are distracted, and he drops three skelly spells. And those three skelly spells just rip that queen apart in no time. Uh, then the skellies tear up that expo as well. Um, skellies are eventually going to rip out of that wall, and they're going to clean up this all of this stuff down here. Uh, he's got three hounds left right now, um, plenty of loons, so lots of haste here. He brought four haste spells. He had a heal spell, which, which worked very nicely right there. Um, in fact, his hounds kind of th fly through that heal spell on, on their way to the final um, air defense. And you can see it is this, this base is just wrecked at this. There is one air targeting defense. There it goes. They got to take out this last cannon, and they are done. All those skellies from that skelly spell are still going wild down here. And it is just clean up. Uh, drops a hound or a, a, a loon and a couple of archers to help with cleanup, but it is GG. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Iggy. Loved it. All right, so usually I don't show two attacks by one person, but um, I got to give it up to Chad here, man. Um, Armor Queen, which is uh, th that is the Town Hall 10 for Chad, who is uh, Chad's Town Hall 9, is in 2.0. And he came up with a six-pack on Town Hall 10. So we're going to start with the first one here. Um, very impressive six-pack. Uh, this one was a Penta. So a Town Hall 10 Penta Laloon. Um, brings in a couple of giants. Just a tank. Pull that CC out. And that allows him to bust, bust open the wall over here. And... get his king down. Uh, king is down, queen is down, um, and he's just distracting this all-ground CC. Letting his king and queen take care of the enemy king and queen and hopefully take care of that expo. Doesn't quite get it there. Um, however, uh, he let that CC just kind of run wild for a while. And now he's going to bring a full-on air attack. Pentalaloon um, had a max hound in the CC, freezes and rages right over the top of uh, the, that heavy defensive area. Uh, three hounds now, uh, two hounds now <laughs> on that CC there, or I mean that air defense there. Note this full health Pekka just hanging out down here. Does not, there we go. Gets that freeze down. And brings in the last hound from the top. He still has two loons in the bag. And look at all of those hounds just pop. Bam. Um, he's got this one hound left. And if, if memory serves, this hound is not going to pop. They're going to wind up moving over to the... Um, uh, Expo there, and I believe that hound lives through this whole raid. But just an awesome, awesome attack by Chad. That is it. Tree stars in the bag. Very well thought out. And you'll you can see why this guy's in 2.0, right? Just 
awesome, awesome planning. Um, the planning on the next attack that we're going to watch is is awesome as well. Maybe even better than the planning that we saw on that one. So uh, Chad likes to do air stuff. Um, right there we had a Penta here. He's going to come with a uh, cold-blooded, uh, but with a uh, cold-blooded Lalo with, with four hounds. And he's got access to the queen here. So he, he drops that um, max level golem. It, it, it just gets eaten alive. But the goal is just to distract enough to get in there and kill this queen. Queen is down. He's going to get tons of value. He's going to get both of these, uh, or all of those uh, hidden Teslas down. He gets an air defense down. And he will eventually, here we go, get one of those... Um, Inferno Tower's down. So now he's looking at three air defenses and one Inferno Tower, five hastes, and a freeze, and that freeze is going to be used right over the top of that Inferno Tower, of course. So um, in with two of his hounds, uh, immediately that Inferno Tower is on those hounds, um, but doesn't matter. Freeze comes down. Everything moves towards this next air defense. With these tightly compact air defenses it's kind of scary because if, if your loons get get closer to the air defense than your hounds do then it just sits there and targets those loons and just eats them alive but uh finally um he's got three uh hounds he's only had one hound pop there goes a the second hound um just sitting on this air defense eventually i believe uh one more hound pops i think maybe not wow um, anyway, this base is just wrecked. Tree stars in the bag. Um, swags a spell there. Uh, nice job. Great attack. All right, we're going to watch one more. And Justin is, um, one of our lower town hall tens. And this is at 4040 Heroes. Uh, he's number seven um, uh, on the uh, on the list of of uh, or that's his order. Uh, so Justin is going to come in and he starts by trying to just get some value. Remember, two stars are what we're looking for on these Town Hall Elevens by Town Hall Tens. Um, right now, Town Hall Eleven uh, triples are are so rare um, that if you can use your tens to to get a two star on a Town Hall Eleven, um, you're, you're doing a you know, you're doing a great service to your Town Hall 11s, and that frees them up to go for triples on Town Hall 10s. Um, anyway, he's getting a bunch of value. Then he comes in with the queen. He's going to wall break the queen in here in just a second. Um, she's getting a lot of value, taking out a lot of point defenses here. Uh, Eagle Artillery has not opened up yet. She is going to beat on that king, and then, boom, opens the wall for the queen. And over here, he is going to open the wall for this golem. There it is. <laughs> but the golem doesn't go in. Bowlers will go in. And the bowlers are going to uh, very, very quickly um, push to that town hall. Heal is down. Rage is down. Jump is down. Uh, he only has one spell left, and that's a rage spell minus that poison. But uh, rage spell is now down right where it needs to be. Um, Town Hall is down almost. There we go. Picks up one star. He is down now to a queen. That's it. Oh, a couple of baby drags over there trying to pick up some value. There's the second star. So he does get his 50%. Um, but what I love about this attack is his queen, she just does not give up here. Um, she basically is going to pull in, uh, well, at least another 10% from right here, I believe. But uh, she beats through this wall, <laughs> tries to send in some wall breakers to help her out. doesn't work. Um, but she beats through that wall, takes out a few more defenses. She does finally get taken out here. Um, but she gets about 65 66%, something like that, 67%. And that is it. But two stars. Great job, Justin. Very nice plan. Um, worked perfectly. So that is it. A great match against some former uh, 2.0 family members. Um, Invicta winds up coming away with the win by six triples. And 
it was a fun war. Uh, great start to the CWLL season, and I will see you next week for another CWLL recap. This is Dr. D. Clash on.